hey, we got an epilepsy warning, but it literally flashes on screen for one second. Have it there for at least five seconds so the viewers can have a chance to read it. The house and the sky are pretty much the same color, so it's hard to tell where the sky begins and the house ends. These windows are... Usually windows like these that are towards the ceiling are much slimmer. The establishing shot of the house lasts an entire five seconds, which wouldn't be a bad thing if there was anything else in the scene that was moving. Even just the grass or the tree leaves swaying would have made the shot much more lively. All right, I literally have the brightness on my monitor set to high and I still can't see Afton. I know it's supposed to be nighttime, but seriously, I can barely see anything else that isn't immediately lit by the light coming through the window. Cloth physics on the blanket here are super jiggly, and it makes it not look much like a blanket, or at least not like any I've seen. Also, when the blanket lifts up, there's a frame where its reflectiveness flashes. With that and the janky physics, the corner of the blanket becomes very distracting. Also, the wisp's shadow is thin and has very hard edges, when considering it's a blob of smoke or whatever pink wisps are made out of, it should have a pretty spread out and soft shadow. Also, the wisp is pink, meanwhile Ballora's ghost is blue for the rest of the video. Moonlight overexposes Afton's white shirt. In fact, I'm just gonna add three sins for all the overexposure in this video and move on. The cloth physics begin again when the scene switches. Also, I'm not even gonna get into how wrong it is that Afton sleeps in a tie. I don't know about you, but if I had just seen some phantom perfume flying around in my room, this would not be the face I react with. I was about to give a sin off for the attention to detail of making the clock actually tick, but then I noticed that there's only 10 hours on the clock instead of 12. Nani? You were this close, Mr. Clock. This close. That I saw the gold sunshine glow. What kind of person explores their home with a lantern? Just turn on the lights for Pete's sake. That arm bend. That I saw the gold sunshine glow. Why did Afton leave his fire on while he was sleeping? Not only is that a waste of fuel, but a serious safety hazard. No, Afton's body snaps into place in the beginning of the shot. No, it doesn't reach. Afton's tie during this entire scene doesn't seem like it's simulated. It looks more like the mesh was just moved around, which is strange because other shots in this video have working dynamics. Well, Afton's arms are just clipping straight into his torso and head, adding five sins for all the rest of the clipping issues in this video. Um, just a minor little detail, but, um, his thumb is on the wrong side of his hand! It doesn't reach down. Afton's hand was legit just about to grab the lever, but in the next scene, his hand is much further away from it. That's strike one for shot continuity. Also, this animation during this scene is pretty shaky, and I doubt it's from him shaking in fear, because this does not look like the face of fear. Down below, shadows become Wait, why is Ballora showing back up? We just saw her arm, implying she was out already. Consistency strike two. Shadows become Afton isn't even looking at Ballora here. Oh, he is now. All right, she blatantly switches positions between scenes. Strike three for continuity errors. Three sins, please, editor. Despite these lights being on, they barely light up the staircase. Ballora loses the wispy effect that was around her as she reaches the bottom of the stairwell. Like me. The light that's above the stairwell has moved places. It's higher than it should be at this angle. The edge glow around Afton caused by the moonlight is way too strong. My bones and gears creak in my chest. Ah, the good old moving a Minecraft character's limb to the point where it's just floating off the body move. My bones and gears creak in my chest, my chest forever cold. This scene switch here is a bit jarring as we go from a well-lit scene to a super dark one. Oh, a cold and maddening just... Alora's skirt floats here for a few frames despite having some decent physics here a moment ago. I'm left here in the dark. I know we already seen the clipping, but Ballora's hair clips through the ground so much here. Would have been better to have the hair dynamic, or at least animatable, so you could get around this problem. In the dark, the dark, I dance to forget. Again, Ballora's skirt moves super unnaturally here. The area where the two curtains meet are lit up for some reason. This is my There's more light coming from Afton's elbow than from the actual light source. 
Does Ballora not have her skirt on in this shot? That's, um, an interesting detail. Also, the silhouette would not be possible, because in this shot, we see a bright light source, but when we're inside the room, we don't see any light except from Ballora herself. From the world where I want to be. Afton is foot sliding big time right here. What is this thing? S seriously, what is this thing? It looks like a reference model or a stand-in model or something. Lock the door, throw up. What and where is this room? There is no way this is all under his house. Down in a pitch black room. The blankets become less and less opaque as the video goes on. Why? Me. I hate my metal bones. The animation went from the movements before to something that looks nearly like motion capture. Don't get me wrong, the animation previously wasn't bad in any way. It's just the difference is noticeable and jarring. The animator just dragged the mini arenas across the bar to keep up with Afton, but the crawl cycle is slow, making them look as if they're just gliding. Mini arena clings onto Afton as he jumps and even manages to hold on. Then, in the next shot, it's just gone. Also, Afton just floats off the catwalk. Afton's tie, instead of flopping upwards as it should because he's falling down, just sort of sways from side to side instead. A cold and Afton leans up before his hands make contact with the conveyor belt. Also, Afton's tie gravitates towards his chest for some reason here. A cold and Why does Afton's hair have specular reflection on it? Is his hair made of metal? Descending down so far. Afton conveniently lands right in front of the only thing on this conveyor belt. Until there's nothing this mini arena freezes in place so Afton can get his home run hit. This is the expression of innocent curiosity, rather than a man who just beheaded an animatronic. Also, he isn't even looking at the vat of molten metal. I dance to the arc of Afton's jump here is shaky and is too tall for him to believably land on that hook. For some reason, Afton becomes incredibly reflective in this scene, specifically the underside of his head and the top of his shirt. Afton's run cycle has a bunch of force to it, but with the way the camera is moving, it looks like he's going really slow. Afton's tie physics back at it again. It literally just folds in on itself vertically. Afton is frozen almost completely still, so I couldn't even see where he was at first. It's like a game of Where's Waldo? Nice. The front part of Ballora's skirt is just gone for this sequence. It triggers the heck out of my OCD. As the song plays down, down, dance with me. Afton looks more like a concerned young boy rather than a grown man who's a stone cold serial killer. I hate my metal bones, my bones and gears creak in my chest, my chest forever. It doesn't look like they use rolled IK arms here since they move forward just a bit. A cold, a cold anatomy. Ballora snaps into this position in the span of a couple of frames. Descending down so far, fall farther till there's nothing left. In no world can an animatronic that size, which likely weighs a minimum of 500 pounds, exorcist crawl on the roof like that. Mini Rena should have fallen straight to the ground long before it reached that button, unless Afton is secretly a star pitcher. The lights flickering off in the back become blacker than any black in the entire scene. It's like literally a black hole, or square. This cube on his hand is a different color than all the others. Afton's tie simulation doesn't move in slow motion. Afton floats into the elevator slowly, as if the video is in slow motion, but Ballora hits the door at full speed. Also, the way she impacts the door just looks so unnatural. She just stops in place without any forward movement. In conclusion, this video was very entertaining, in both the song and being different from the normal tone FNAF songs hold, and also in the animation being thrilling along with very fluent. Aside from the occasional run cycle being slower than the camera, it had small errors that were mostly nitpicks. All in all, a good watch and a breath of fresh air.
Ryan in my home. <laughs> 